Hey guys, Well Martian back doing another Martian beat blog. Go back a bit. Hey. So Swan was here yesterday. I'll try to post that one up. Got my coffee here. <sighs> Just gonna try to sample some records. I got the old 2000 classic going here. The 16-bit sampler drum machine uh, made by Akai just sample whatever I grab off the shelf. So here's the records I got. A group called House of Random and put your hand in the hand. So they're covering Anne Murray. I think it has a drum break so we're gonna probably take those drums. So I'm just gonna skip right to the drums. The break here. This guy. Next record is gonna be Herbie Mann. Memphis Two Step. It's not a rare record. Uh, Herbie Mann plays flute. So I believe this has drums on it as well, just from seeing the cover around. But I don't really like jazz flute. Um... <laughs> It's all right, but you know, I prefer flute samples just layered in. I don't looping them. This is cool. There we go. Oh. So I'll pitch it right up. Forty-five plus eight. Uh, 33 doing that for two reasons um, it saves memory in the sampler so this sampler has 32 megabytes of memory of RAM that's a lot of time actually it's over a minute the other reason you do it is so we've converted an analog signal into digital so it's sitting on the digital memory in this thing's data now as ones and zeros so when you pitch it down within the machine that adds a limitation so when I pitch it down it's gonna give it this kind of crunch and this ring um, this is 16 bits but it still has its own sort of unique sound. I'm just gonna stop the camera and uh, chop some drums. So this guy, Demis Lussos, looks interesting. Keyboard Moog. I can tell from this yellow tag, it's probably from uh, like Goodwill. It's probably a dollar, but I bought it because it says Moog synthesizer. You look like a Frenchman. What I've learned over the years sampling. When I sample, I I pass by more stuff than I take. You know, I don't hear the first thing and be like, oh, loop that, make a beat. I wait for it to trigger something, you know. You gotta wait for that juicy. It's kinda cool, but I'm not gonna sample. That's always useful. A little roll, grab that. Turn it up a little bit. Just, just the tom drums. So name it. Harpsichord in the background and then a melodica harmonica wind instrument over top. Kind of neat, I don't know. Might be fun to chop that later. This sounds cool. I'm just going to start recording now. That's a loop even. With those drums
drums that we got, the first or the second break with that looping, and then maybe put a little bass on it. Might be good. Gonna chop some more. BRB. We're back! <laughs> couple loops going there. It's my buddy Mike's coming over. DJ Nick Zigo. Check out his mixes and productions. Uh, he'll be here in about an hour, so. So I took the loop. Not that loop. This loop. I took that and I copied it and I turned the loop on. I kind of like that effect a bit better than just playing it out, so I'm going to replace the first four hits, which happen every four bars. Got a kind of cool double up there. So again, I was just using step edit. Nice thing about step edit is when you're in the step edit screen, if you have a loop or you have a sound that's set to note off, However long you hold it down, it records that duration as MIDI information. So if you want your loop to sound nice, you can just go in step. Like that, and it'll, it'll record it. So here's what we got for that track. tapping up here when I want the sound to stop completely like if I have something rolling I hit shift 6 main screen that's how I bounce out of a sound it's a quick way to stop it Yep, so I deleted it. I hit open window delete on the sequence, so now I gotta do it all over. Mike's here. <laughs> yeah. You making videos? Ikea makes this little shelf, so this is like slightly modified. This is one I made. It's like it's just an end table Ikea sells. Like I added these, but like it's a cheap way to just get the lumber, and it's already almost the right size. Like, oh, for to make racks. Like forty bucks at IKEA. The rast, the rast rack. The rast rack. That's sick.
yo, yo. Nick Seagull left. Just came by for a bit. He had to go to work. DJ Nick Seagull, my old friend. some stuff up while DJ Nick Seagull was here. Then I just added a snare off that guy, <laughs> off the uh, D drum. So we got kick snare, beefing up the drum brakes. We layered two drum brakes with a sample loop. I might add some uh, kind of whooshy cymbals or brushes or something. I'm gonna look for them on one of these modules now. <laughs> All right, so I added a little shuffle sound in there. That. It's really sparse in there. I had that other sample, that weird harmonica thing. So I'm doing a bit of filtering on it. The 2000 Classic has uh, a low pass and it also has a resonance filter. Those are the only two filters it has. So yeah, that sounds in there now. I got that little vocal. So I did a little kind of note repeat with the vocal, which I may or may not use once it's tracked in. Um, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna track this in, it might end up being just a stereo. But here's the beat. <laughs> Still going, still at it here. No clue what time it is. Sunday, January 17th, it's 10.15. So crazy thing, remember that last couple videos and I was talking about doing more tape? Well, I did it. You know, sometimes there's nothing to it, but to do it. So there it is, just cracked open this fresh tape here. And I remembered, hey, wasn't I making a vlog today? Here's the tape, this is called Reel to Reel. It's the name of the format, it was before a track before cassette, fresh reel straight from the factory. There's where you start the tape, so you gotta put it the right way. That's step one. Beauty. I plugged in a send from the board to the patch bay, and then I patched into the EQ, and then I patched into the compressor, and then to the tape, and it worked. I'm pretty stoked about that fact. So have you got your three tape heads? I'm gonna give it a go here. Hopefully it's not too noisy. That's my biggest uh, fear because these two pieces, the EQ and compressor, are passing signal and working great. So I pull the tape through. You probably can't see. There's a little slot there. And I just wind it over itself. And boom, there it is. I left a little dangling thing. That's okay. Don't worry about that. So playing and stopping. Now I'll play the beat and I'll see these little green lights light up. Oh, here's the beat. <laughs> actually worked and I'm really happy with the sound that that DVX compressor is giving it's actually much better than I expected so that was another pawn shop thing I always say go to the pawn shops buy and sell 85 no tax <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.